Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Mercy. 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 We give you all the glory, God. <clears throat> we give you all the glory, God. We give you all the honor, God. Father, you reign. You reign, God. You reign, God. We bless you. We thank you that we, we were here this morning, Lord. We could have been anywhere else, Lord, but we thank you that we were here this morning, Lord. We thank you that we were here. We thank you for all that you have done and are doing, oh God, and will do. We bless your name in Jesus' name. Hallelujah and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's been a while since I've been up here, so I just needed to take a look and see what I was fighting for. Hmm. Been a minute. Been a minute. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Yea, God. Well, <clears throat> I'm going to just start from the perspective of just St. John's 3.16, man. So, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but, but have everlasting life. Thus, today, we, we, we celebrate the Lord, and, and for me, it's, just, it's, it's simply the gift that keeps on giving. It's simply the gift that, that keeps on giving. You know, this, this time of the year can be, can be rough for so many. <clears throat> Instead of it being a time of of gladness, it, it, it could be a time of, of sadness. You know, you, you've, you've lost loved ones that, you know, in the past have, have been there during, during Christmas time. You've, you've been able to hear their voice, even if, you, even if, even if they weren't with you, you, you were able to talk to them. And maybe this Christmas, they're, they're no longer with us. It's times of, of loneliness. You, you, you live alone, or you, or you might be in a house full of folk and feel alone you know, during, during this season. You, you know, maybe you, you, know, you thought you was going to get something up under the tree, and you got something, but you didn't get what you thought you would, and, and maybe that puts you in a, a bit of a funk. And then not to mention, we, we, we look at the season that we've been in the last three or four years and <clears throat> with COVID and, and the flu on the uptick and now you got the RSV, and you just start to wonder, Lord, what is next? You know, it, 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 it could be so easy to become so, so pessimistic in, in this season um, in, instead of optimistic. But it's, it's a good time to uh, take stock in not just only what was under the tree, but what hangs high. My God. But, but, but what hung on the tree, yes, amen, that, that, that thing that hung on the tree changed your life. That, that man that hung on the tree gave you a different perspective. That, that man that hang, hung on the tree uh, gave you a different point of view. That, that man that hang, hung on the tree gave you life and life more abundantly. That, that man that hung on the tree gave you something that you never had before. For he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even those that believe on his name. So I just stopped by really this morning, man, to, to, to share with you all of the things that God has done for you, to, to share with you all of the gifting that God has given you, just, just in case you didn't get what you wanted under the tree, just in case you're in a little bit of a funk this year because, you know, you you, you, you lost a loved one, and, and that loved one is, is no longer with you. Just in case you're not in a place where you, you, you need to be spiritually speaking, I, I just stopped by to, 
let you know what you do have and, and the gifts that, that God has given you. And the thing about God is God does not wait for special occasions to bless you. God does not wait to, for Christmas time to give you the best gift. God does not wait for, for Thanksgiving to give you the best gift. God does not wait for your anniversary to give you the best gift. God does not wait for a special holiday to, to give you the best gift. And in fact, God gives you the best gift whether you've been nice or naughty because of his grace. Because he, he loves you so much that even though you've been naughty, and you, truth be told, some of us have been naughty, God still blesses us because of his magnificent grace. Amen. Thank you, because of his magnificent grace. Because he, he loves us tremendously. He is the consummate giver of all things. Amen. He's the, the consummate giver of all things. And so I just, I just stopped by to encourage you to, to help you understand that though you, you might not have everything you want, maybe you, you didn't get what you thought you were going to get, but the truth of the matter is, is that in Christ you, you have all you need. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him would not perish but have everlasting life. First John, First John 3.16 says, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. You see, Christ loved us so much that Christ didn't just give us part of himself. When Christ went to the cross, he didn't just give us the, the parts of himself that, that he thought might be good for us to have. He, he gave us all of himself. And, 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 and it's incumbent of us that as he gives all of himself to us, that we give all of ourselves back to him. In fact, this is a requirement, isn't it? The Bible says, thou shalt love the Lord thy God, right? With all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. How, how much is all? The last time I checked, it was all. Amen? And the thing is, is that when we have this gift, we have everything that we need. Because didn't he say something like that he would supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. But then he went on to say something else. He said that if you would delight yourself, <laughs> if you would delight yourself in his law, he said he would give you the desires of your heart. So, so, so God is a dream maker. God is a, a dream fulfiller. God, God can give you and do things for you that, that man just cannot do. He gives us, listen, all things that pertain to life and godliness. Well, let me help you with that. All things that pertain to life, your physical. I, I make sure you got some water to drink. Even if you don't have Kool-Aid, you got some water. I, I make sure you got a little something on the table to eat. It might, not be a, it might not be a steak like I missed when I was in Africa. It might not be a hamburger. Come on, uh, uh, come on, uh, Evangelist Wendy. You know what I'm talking about. It might not be a, a hamburger like, like I needed when I was in Africa. It might have only been goat and chicken for, for two weeks, but I bless God for goat and chicken. But I, bless, but I bless God for, 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 for golden chicken because he, he, not only, he not only gave me what I needed, but he, but he gave me the desires of, our, of my heart. And he's a, he's, a, he's a dream fulfiller. This is why it's so important to, to stay with God, not just because of what he can give you, but if we serve him faithfully, all of the things that, that you have before the altar, all of the face time as you lay before God, believe in God for it, God is a promise fulfiller. God fulfills his promises. Some of us have been waiting five years, 10 years, 20 years, waiting on God to fulfill. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage, for he shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord, because he fulfills his promises. He fulfills his dreams. He fulfills those things that, that we have, you know, in, in, in our heart. This, this gift of 
of salvation through Christ Jesus, through, through his death on, on the cross. It's a gift, y'all, that, that keeps on giving. It's a gift that keeps it keeps on giving. When, when, we, when we open that package called salvation, there's so many more gifts to pull from. You, you open up salvation and you think, well, there's sanctification. I got all I need. And he says, well, keep peeling it back. Well, Lord, there's propitiation. He said, no, I ain't, I ain't done. Keep peeling it back. Lord, there's conversion. Well, I, I ain't done. Keep, keep peeling it back. There's forgiveness. Well, I ain't done. Keep peeling it back. There's conversion. Well, I ain't done. Keep pulling it back. There is faith. Well, I ain't done. Keep pulling it back. It's a gift that keeps on giving, which, which, which tells you that, that God is not so quick to give up on us. That God is, is not so quick that even when we've been naughty to throw in the towel. That God has, has set up some things by way of this package called salvation that it almost makes it impossible for you to lose your salvation. He loves you that much. He loves you that much. And I, I recognize that we can, we can get caught up on, on what, we, what we don't have. You know, looking at what Susie and Johnny and all of them have next door instead of focusing on the things that we do have. But when we start focusing on the gift giver and all that he has given us, listen, it, it, it ought to cause you to raise your hands and give him praise. It, it, it ought to cause you to, God, I, God, I, I thank you. It, it, it ought to cause you, God, I bless you. Here we are again at the end of the year with the measure of our life, our health, and our strength. And somebody ought to be crying out saying, God, thank you for 2022. You've taken me through 2020, 2021, 2022. COVID's here. RSV is still here. All hell is breaking loose. But I'm still here in my right mind. I still have a measure of my life, my health, and my strength. I might not have the roof that I want, but I got a roof. I might not have the car that I want, but I got a car. I might not have the job that I want, but God, you've given me enough to put some food on the table. You've given me enough to pay Duke Power, PSNC, and a little bit of cable bill. See, y'all don't know. Y'all don't want to mess with me today because I've been in a place where they don't have much. Y'all do not want to mess with me for a while because I've been in a place where they didn't have much and what they had, they gave it. Walk in a house no bigger than, no bigger than my walk-in closet with five people in it and they offering you with nothing else a cup of hot tea. They offer you of nothing else, the love of God. And you knew when you walked out of that home, am, am I telling the truth, evangelist? You knew when you walked out of that home, you were loved. They might not have had a whole lot, but what they did have, you can't pay for. One man of God said to me, he said, listen, man, I, 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 I get why. Because I'm, I'm trying to figure out, man, yeah. Y'all have worshipped the Lord an hour and 45 minutes. The, the worship service started at 5.30. It was 7.15 before I stood up to minister. So I'm thinking by this time, these folk going to be tired. I had done preached an hour and they were still leaning in trying to figure out what's next. And when the altar call was made, they don't do like the folk in America when you call an altar call and they're trying to figure out whether or not they should go. They stampede the altar. And he said, the problem with America is that y'all got so much stuff that you let stuff hinder what God desires to do. And why would you allow stuff, the stuff that God has given you to hinder that? I'm still trying to figure this out. He's given us all things that pertains to life and godliness and then some, and then we're still trying to decide whether or not we want to praise God. 
He said, y'all got so much stuff in the way that you can't really see God. You go to church for an hour and you think you've done something. But he said, we don't, we don't have all that. We, we, got, we got enough. We got enough. And yes, you might say, but Pastor Dane in America, and, and they hadn't seen, but, but we saw both sides of the track, didn't we? We, we saw the poor, saw the poor, but then we got a chance to go sit down with some folk with some real money behind some gated communities. But the mentality is still the same, whether you rich or poor. Them, them folk will praise God and then lean in for the word. They're not looking at the cart going, oh, God, and what, 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 what am I going to do after when, when, the, when, when the service is over? I'm, I'm different, y'all. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just different. And I'm going to be that way for a while. Because I didn't even know how to deal with it. I didn't even know how to deal with it. When are these folk going to stop praising God so I can preach? When are these folk going to stop dancing so I can preach? These folk been dancing since 5.30 and it's 7.15 and they still dancing. And then the word comes and ain't nobody doing this. We got a lot of things right with America. I, I, I ain't going to blast America. I love it. I love it. I do. But, but we got a lot of things in our way that hinders real worship as it pertains to our Lord. And I've seen it. I've put my feet on the ground and witnessed it. You see, it, it's, it's hard. You know, Minister T used to say to me, it's, it's hard to come back and tell you. And after I told her for four years, I, there ain't nothing in Africa I want to see. I ain't lost nothing over there. It's, it's, hard for, it's hard for you to envision unless, you actually, unless you're actually in it. it. It was hard for me to envision when apostle would come back and say, the people are coming for miles to praise and to worship the Lord, and, and, and they come into church dancing, and they lead a church dancing, and they're walking for miles. It was hard for me to envision because, man, I, I get to get in my 2016 Chevrolet and drive to, drive to church. It's hard to envision. But the thing is, is that we, we serve such, such a gracious and, and a giving God uh, in this season. And we need to, to be able to appreciate all that he's doing. You know, the, the Bible talks about um, uh, 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 men knowing how to give good gifts to their children. Was that uh, St. Luke 11 and 13? It says, for ye being, being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children. For how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Listen to that we said. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask of him? So, so what Jesus was saying, listen, even, even as evil men, you, you know how to give good, a good gifts to your children. You, you know how to take care of your four and no more. You, you know how to make sure that your children have, have all of their needs met. But in a relationship-driven ministry, you, you, you got to be concerned about the needs of others, too. Yes. You, you got to be concerned about giving to others, too. And so Jesus says, and so I'm going to give man the best gift that they can ever have. I'm going to give man the gift of the Holy Ghost because when he gets this Holy Spirit, when he gets this best gift, we won't be trying to figure out whether or not he's willing to bless his four. He'll bless his four, your four, my four, and any more that decides to come about when he has the Holy Spirit of God on the inside. He says, you know, he says, you being evil, you know how to give good gifts to your children. The challenge is, do you, will you be prepared to give gifts to somebody else's children? Because I'm going to call you forth to do something in Kenya. I'm preparing you now. I'm preparing you now. Our sphere of influence has just widened. 
It's, it's super enlarged now. It's super. I'm going to challenge you to give to somebody else's children other than your own. I know you got plenty. God didn't send me all the way over there to come back and, 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 and pauper it and say, oh God, would you, would you please do? The anointing is already on this ministry to do it. I declare it and decree it even right now. The Holy Spirit of God is on the inside of you so that you won't, you're not just looking at doing something for your children, but you're looking at doing something for somebody else's children. You see, if all you do is do for yours, then you, I'm going to be nice, then you haven't done as much as you could do. We're a relationship-driven ministry. Our sphere of influence has enlarged. It, 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 it has enlarged. And I'll do whatever I got to do to bless them. If I got to take a pay cut, I will. But guess what? I ain't got to do that because I, I, I was sitting over in Africa. Come on. Come on. I, I, I was sitting over in Africa and, and applied for a job months ago that I'd forgotten about. And they sent me an email while I was in Africa saying, we just, we, we just blessed you with this promotion. We, 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 we were sitting up, up in the upcountry celebrating a job that I had forgotten that I even applied for. Hallelujah. A job that when I first applied for it, my wife said, just, just, just stop. Just don't look no more. You, you, know it, you know it takes the government a while to do anything. Okay, baby, let me just go on to Africa. God set me up to be able to give. Yes. I'm in Africa, 7,000 miles away, and here comes an email. I'm going to do what I'm, 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 try, I'm trying to get y'all to see. Stop being so stingy. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. You listen. You cannot outgive God. You can't. You can You cannot outgive God. And so I'm not just talking about money. I know we we always put it on money. I'm talking time, talents, and treasures. I'm talking time, talents, and treasures. In a relationship-driven ministry, listen, man, you're going to have to give when you don't feel like it. You may have to go when you don't feel like it. You may have to do when you don't feel like it. But listen, it's okay. God sees it even if man doesn't. In fact, why are you trying to please man anyway? Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. That's why I don't put all my trust in man. Because man can't give me what God can. God gives me the Holy Spirit. And out of the Holy Spirit is a plethora, a copious amount of gifts. It's a copious amount of gifts. Listen, I'm, I'm trying to tell y'all something. Man. I'm, I'm walking this thing out with you. But I can't lead you if I'm not the first partaker. I can't talk to you with this kind of passion about giving to some folk a world away if I'm not first partaker. But we going in. But we going in because God told me on the plane ride back in what was that first class that we were blessed with? Listen to me now. I, I, we flew over on coach. Y'all, 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 listen. We flew over on coach. See, it was what, 15, 16 hours? On the way back, uh, apparently the, the, the pastor where I ministered at knew somebody in the airport. They gave us VIP service from the airport. We didn't stand in no lines in the airport. Then they took us to Sky Miles and we, and we, and we drank, you know, whatever we wanted to drink and ate whatever we wanted to eat. And then when we got on the, when we, when we were getting ready to get on the plane, we got a call and said, y'all been upgraded. What, 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 what'd you say, my sister? I have never flown above the, the front, the front of the wing. What was it? She, she said, I've never flown on the front side of the wing. And now, and now I know why they pull the curtains. They don't want folks in coach to see how we live in first class, baby. 
cup of salvation, you didn't pay for this. God did. Boy, I'm trying to tell, I'm trying to get y'all to see your destiny. I'm trying to get y'all to see something. We paid for coach. There and back. But God blessed so well during the conference, the man of God said, I'm going I'm to work on something for y'all. Listen, 13-hour plane ride in coach versus first class or business class is a very different ride. Amen. It, listen, if you ain't never had the opportunity, just ask God, God, let, let me ride. Let me ride it in, uh, 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 in front of the wing where they close the curtains. I'm willing to give God anything he asked for. I'm, I'm willing to give God anything he, anything he asked for. And I'm trying to get you to see all, all of the gifts that, that he gives to us. And sometimes we don't, we don't even recognize it. We don't even recognize it. Out of, out of this, 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 this Holy Spirit, he gave, us, he gave us the gifts of the Spirit, didn't he? I'm just going to read a little bit. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 through 11 says, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of administration, but the same Lord. There are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these work at that one and self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he wills. Now, we understand that this is not all the gifts of the Holy Spirit that has been given to the believer to bless the body of Christ, but, but you get the picture. It, uh, out of, out of this, this gift of the Holy Spirit births what? Other gifts. You still, as I said earlier, you're still peeling the package back. You're still peeling it back for all that God has given you. Things that you haven't even discerned. Things that you hadn't even taken the thought to, to think about. This time of the year is a good time to think about all that God has given us. And we understand that God gives us these gifts as he wills for the building up of his kingdom. He signs and, and miracles and wonders comes forth from these gifts and no gift is greater than another. Because to say that any gift is greater than any other is to say that God is somehow diminishing his gifts and God never diminishes his gifts. He gives to man severally as he will. And here's the thing about God. God ain't no favorites with God. God, God doesn't love me any more than he loves you or, or any less than, than he loves you because the truth is, is that he died for us all. He died for us all, and so any gift that, that you have, listen, and that I have, there ain't no reason for us to be jealous at all because he gave it to us because of purpose. He gave it to us to, to work together and to operate in unity, to build up the body of Christ. He gave it to us to do a work for the kingdom of God. And so when you start looking at all of the things that you have, all of the things that you're beginning to peel back in the kingdom, man, you start to just be more thankful and more thankful and more thankful. But then that wasn't even the best gift because in that same chapter, in that same chapter at the end, Paul says, but covet earnestly the best gift. And I'll show you a more excellent way. And then he opens up in, in 1 Corinthians 13 talking about love. Trying to get us to understand that, listen, unless what you do is motivated by his love, it's all for naught. If you're doing what you do out of the flesh, it's all for naught. 
if you do what you do to get a pat on the back from man, it's all for naught. What he's saying is, listen, man, you, you, give your, you, you, you give to feed the poor. You give your body to be burned. In other words, you, your body is going through all types of things, you know, to, to give unto somebody. But if you don't do it with the love of God in your heart, the Bible says it profits you nothing. And I heard Minister Tanya say when we were on the trip, Pastor, what would the world be like if we just decided to love like God? I had to think about that thing. I had to think about that thing. Because we, we, we talked all the time. I, I, I need you to understand that for two weeks there was no TV. For, for two weeks I didn't, get to, I didn't get to watch any NFL. But you know what? It didn't even matter. Because our happy place was at the dinner table for two hours. Every meal we ate, we were at the dinner table fellowshipping with one another. Would to God that families would get back to the dinner table. I said, man, I'm, I'm going to start something at home. Because, you know, the house is so big, everybody will go to their own room. Everybody will go to their own TV. <laughs> And we won't talk unless it's something heavy. Lord, Hammer, now, now we need to talk because we got a problem. Whatever happened to just talking around some food and having fun? Man, right. We did it every day for 13 days. Man, right. Am I lying? We did it every day for 13 days. Three meals a day. I, I, I got tired of them feeding me. Let, let me just go out. No, 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 that's not what we do. Every day. We got a little bit of time. Every day, all day. But here's the thing. The fellowship was priceless. Would to God that, they, see, I'm say, what I'm saying to you is that there's so much that we can learn from these people. Because would to God that, that we would, would get back to the dinner table. Cut the TV off, at least while we're eating, and let's look, look one another in the eye. Put your phones down. Put your electronic devices down, and let's just talk to one another. And it ain't got to be nothing heavy. We, we want to talk. Husbands and wives want to talk when we got some mess going on. What about just coming together and just laughing with one another? You know, just having some, some conversation around... Maybe not goat in America. <laughs> I ain't never ate goat till I went to Africa. And told them before I went, man, I ain't eating no goat. <laughs> man, when they kill that goat and fried it, it's a, I kill that goat. <laughs> and what I'm talking to y'all now, it, this stuff was fresh. This was right out the yard. They killed that chicken. That, that chicken came right out the yard. These folk ain't got whole foods. Oh my God, y'all, boy, y'all don't know. But when I get you over there, you will know. You, 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 you will know. You, you will know. You will know. Listen, we, we got to covet earnestly the best gift, and, and that's the gift of love. And listen, and I understand, I understand that everybody wants the, the gifts of the Spirit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what everybody's talking about, miracles, signs, and wonders. Yeah, God, we, everybody wants the, 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 the gifts of the Spirit, but, but what about the fruit? But what about the fruit? It sounds like to me that Paul is saying, listen, the thing that God is most impressed with is the fruit. Because the first thing that God is looking for when he looks at you is he wants to know, is the love of God in your heart? When I look at you, can I see the love of God? Because the Bible says the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. So when he gives you a gift, he's not, he's not trying to take it back. You can, you can forfeit the gift by not using it. But, but he, the, the gifts is not the thing that impresses God. The thing that impresses God is that love. Can you, can you love somebody? Yeah, think, about, think about what the crime rate would be if, if we all loved like, like the Lord. Think about what the crime rate would be. Think, think about, if, if we loved like the Lord, think about what we would do to the prison system. It would crumble in America. 
If we loved like the Lord, think about what we would do to the justice system. And them folk in, in black robes. See, because it, it, ain't, it, ain't, it ain't the white robes that's messing us up now. It's them white folk in black robes. But, but think about what that would look like if we loved like the Lord would have us to love. You would almost crumble the economy as we know it. This thing heavy, ain't it? This, this, this thing heavy, ain't it? You, you, put the, you, wouldn't have, you wouldn't have a need for prison guards. You put the prison system slap out of business. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, help me. But I, I, I get it. You know, the, 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 the thing about it is, we, we, it's, it's, the, it's the, the, the miracles and the gifts and, and the signs and the wonders that, that, that the church talks about. But listen, love is what we, <clears throat> what we should be talking about because I get it. Love, love doesn't look good packaged under the tree. Love, love, love is not what's going, is not what's going to move me when, when I've been hoping for my Xbox or when I've been hoping for my PlayStation 4 or when I've been hoping for that diamond necklace or when I've been hoping for that new ride that should have a bow on it outside. <laughs> love, that, love ain't the thing that Good Morning America is talking about. It's not the hot item. I, I, I get it. I get it. Love won't sell in America. It, it just won't sell. But, but, but I believe that, that some of us had an opportunity to watch love be wrapped in a package like we've never seen and I believe we're different for. In the right space and in the right place, love will sell. Yes, sir. In fact, in the right place and in the right space, love is the only thing that matters. Love is the only thing that matters. And the fruit of the Spirit is love. You know what? The rest of them, the, the rest of them that comes after love, all flows out of the root called love. Amen. Catch this. Catch this. I, I, I get it. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, faith, temperance, against all of that, against such there is no law. It starts with love. Why? Because God's nature is love. God's nature is love. So I, I, I get it. I get it. Listen, this, this ain't the, the, love ain't the thing that sells this time of year. But we got to do a better job with it. Finally, I'm getting ready to wrap up. Finally, God gave gifts to the church when he gave us the five-fold ministry. Hey, so you see how God does this? God says, I'm going to start with giving myself. <laughs> Then I'm going to give you the spirit. And then out of the spirit, I'm going to let you peel it back and, 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 and get some fruit and some gifts and just, and just peel back. But then I can't leave you without letting you know how I feel about my five-fold gifting that I gave to you. Because it's all to encourage you. It's all to strengthen you. It's all to build you up. Ephesians 4 and 11 and 12 says this, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Listen, this is why you have to watch how you treat your spiritual leaders. It's because they are gifts from God to the body. So, so when you mistreat God's man or woman, you're actually mistreating God. When you, when, you, when you talk down about God's uh, uh, man or woman, you, you, you're actually talking down or talking bad about God because they are God's gifts. And so it's up to God to deal with 
his gifts. In other words, you may not agree with everything Pastor Mason says. You may not agree with everything Pastor Mason does. You may not agree with everything that comes out of Pastor Mason's mouth. And you might not like it, but you better let God deal with it. Because touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm. They are gifts from God. And when you try to diminish God's man or woman, you're basically trying to diminish God because these are gifts from God to his body. For what? The perfecting of the saints. For the work so that the saints can do the work of the ministry. What's the work of the ministry? To edify the body. To build up the body of Christ. So when David was saying, you know, touch not my anointed and, and do my prophets no harm, David, listen, David had experienced this. Because does anybody remember, does anybody remember when, when, when Saul really got jealous of David? There was a song going on in 1 Samuel where they were singing. And they were saying, man, Saul has killed his thousands, but David has killed his ten thousands. And David said, then, then Saul said, well, but, well, what more can he have but the kingdom? And then he sought out to do what? To kill David. He sought out to kill David, right? But I want to read something to you. As he sought out to kill David, 1 Samuel 24, 3 through 5 says this, And he came to the sheep coat, by the way, where was a cave, and Saul went in to cover his feet. In other words, he just went in to relieve himself to use the bathroom. And David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. And the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thine enemy into thine hand, that thou mayest do to him as it shall, as it shall seem good unto thee. In other words, in other words, Saul now, man, is, is, is kind of caught with his britches down. <laughs> Literally. And, and, and look, and, and David and his mighty men are in the cave. And David's mighty men are saying, boy, this is your time. Go jack this rascal up. Go get him. This is the time. This is the Lord's doing. You, you, and and, and easy, it's easy to get caught up. It's easy to get caught up. He, he listen, he, he a set up. Just go on in and take him out. Go on in and take him out. But listen, listen to what verse 5 says. It says, then David arose and cut off the skirt of Saul's robe privily, and it came to pass afterwards that David's heart smote him because he had cut off Saul's skirt. I need you to pay attention to the term, and David's heart smote him. Why did David's heart smote him? Because he did something to God's gift to Israel that he had no right to do. Yeah, you didn't kill him. But it wasn't even your it wasn't even your role to cut off the man of God's skirt. Yes, I know he's a wicked king now. Yes, I know that he's he's trying to kill you, but 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 I got you. But Saul is my problem, not your problem. You don't get to touch the gift that I gave to Israel, whether you and your 400 men agree with it or not. Right. What are you saying? You don't get to go in on your leaders. You don't get to down talk and talk bad about your leaders and mistreat your leaders. If they in the wrong, God's got them. They are God's gift to the body and God will deal with them. It's not your problem, it's God's. I need to speak to this now. Because in America, we don't know how to treat pastors and preachers. I've been in a place where I've been treated like a king. That's just the truth. They didn't have a whole lot of money to give. But what they gave, you know they, that they loved you. You know that they loved you. You know that there wasn't a whole bunch of snickering and, and talking back by, behind your back and talking about the man and the woman of God. The fivefold ministry is the gift of God to the body. And when you diminish them, 
you diminish God. And you don't want to have a problem with God, baby. So if your man and woman of God is not doing what they're supposed to do, you go to God. And you say, God, now, God, you know. God, you know. You know that the route we're going, it ain't, it ain't right, God. And God, I need you to step in and, and intercede on our behalf. You got the right to pray for your man of God or your woman of God, but you don't have the right to put your lips on him. You don't have the right to denigrate him in, 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 in front of the church or anybody else. Because many people are sickly. Many people are weak. Many people are catching hell because of what they're saying and doing about God's gifts. And so I, I, I wanted to bring all of these gifts to your attention to help you to understand all, all, that, all that you have. God said he's, he's not given us the spirit of fear. He said, but I did give you power. I gave you love. I gave you a sound mind. He said, I've given you life and, and life more abundantly. In fact, he said, every good gift and, and every perfect gift comes from above, down from the Father of lights, where there's no variableness, neither shadow of turning. And so it, anything you get, whether good, bad, or in between in your life as a believer, it's a good gift and a perfect gift. If you're going through hell and back right now, it's a good gift and a perfect gift because all things work together for good to them that love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. Every, every gift ain't the new job. Every gift ain't the new car. Every gift ain't the new house. Sometimes I'm just going through. But I'm going to believe God. Sometimes I'm in the valley. But, but I'm going to believe God. Sometimes I'm struggling in my marriage, but I'm going to believe God. Sometimes I'm struggling in my finances, but, but I'm going to believe God. Sometimes I'm struggling with my children, but I'm going to believe God. Sometimes I'm struggling with my health, but I'm going to believe God. Every good and perfect gift. We don't quantify every good and perfect gift by the fact that, oh man, look at the new job I just got. It's everything. Because we sung earlier, he reigns. He reigns. And so, as, 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 as Christ is the gift that keeps on giving, we, we can't be weary in well-doing. We can't get weary in well-doing. We, we have to pay it forward and be the gift that keeps on giving. What, 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 whatever that is. What, what, whatever that is. It's, it's easy, I, I get it, it's easy to get weary in, in well-doing. But the gift that keeps on giving lives on the inside of us and is still more of a blessing to give than it is to receive. Somewhere over there in Acts they said that. I, at least from my perspective, the gift of God is still the greatest gift that we can ever have. Now your perspective might be different. It's okay. It's okay. But, but at least from my perspective, the, the, this, this gift called salvation is still the greatest gift that God has ever given us. And I want you to take stock of all that he's given you. Man, I, I, just, I just touched the tip of the iceberg. David just said it like this, and then we're going home. All things come of thee, O Lord. <laughs> Good God Almighty. All, all, all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee? So why would the things that God has given us that come from God, why would we allow those things to get in the way to hinder our worship? God will not compete with the stuff that he gave you. Either he's number one or he won't be number two. He's not going to compete with our stuff. Praise the Lord our God for all of his goodness, for every good gift, for every perfect gift that has come from above that he has given us, is giving us, and will give us. But there is an anointing that God, that God wants to loose in this place to do a thing, not only in this region, 
but we have touched East Kenya. Oh, we have touched East Kenya. And what that looks like, we still working on it. I know one thing, Mother Monica working on, I want to get them somewhere where, you know what, ain't nobody staying in no hotel when they come. I, 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 want, I, I want them to experience this on a different level. No, no tourism stuff. Look, we ain't have no air conditioning, y'all. There was a whole lot of creature conference that we didn't have that we have in America. But to God be the glory. No. But to God be the glory. Come on and give God a praise. Yeah. Minister, good, good minister, good minister, good minister. We praise the Lord today. Amen. Merry Christmas to you. Amen. Listen, thank, thank you. Th praise the Lord. Thank you for coming out. Praise the Lord. Thank you for coming out. Amen. And, and just celebrating Jesus today. Amen. I, I know that there were a lot of churches closed. Praise God. Um, you know, but there were a few open, you know, still willing to, to come together and, and worship together. Listen, I, I thank God for you, um, for every one of you. It's, it's good to see you. It's good to be. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Um, and it's good just to see the people again that I'm fighting for. You know, to be able to look at the, the faces. Amen. Praise the Lord. I pray that the rest of your day and, you know, the rest of your week, as guess what? We got another week off. Amen. We got another, got another week off. God from Zion. You, listen, in 2023, y'all ought to have, y'all ought to have some running in your feet because you had some. You can't say it was the church the last two weeks, amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord our God. I love you. Raise your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Our Father and our God, we thank you. And we give you the glory and the honor and the praise, Lord God, for all things, Father. We thank you, Lord God, for what you've done in this place today, Lord God. And, and we give you the glory and the honor and the praise, oh God. And, and Father, even as we would uh, leave this place, oh God, but never your presence, oh God. We, we just pray, Lord God, that we get to our destination safety, Lord God, and that we will find, oh God, all things well. Father, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. 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 And before you break, Pastor Kevin, did you want to say anything about... Thank you for Saturday visiting us at Cup of like Salvation you. Online. As you listen, we pray that God was able yeah. to reach you, yeah. teach you, and set you free. We invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel to hear more of God's Word. And if you'd like to sow into the work we're doing yeah, at Cup of Salvation, please go to cupofsalvation.org forward slash give. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.